Yeah, thank you very much for giving me the privilege to be on this platform this evening. And uh, I'm Oladik Bokola Oli. Uh, I'm the founder of Elix Bajani Institute. At the same time, I have a faculty position at uh, Elix at um, Adilike University in Hede. And we all have noticed and have seen that we have uh, technology transiting into every aspect of life in terms of uh, ICT, AI, and such like that. So I will be talking about opportunities that is there that bioinformatics can provide for us in terms of biomedical sciences and the leverages it can give onto us. So I would like to share my slide and start my presentation as soon as possible. Yeah, I think I cannot share my slide for now. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, perfect. Now, let me run to that. Perfect. Now, I'll be talking about the applications of bioinformatics and medical science. Uh, like I said, I'm Dr. Ladiko Kolawali, and I'm an International Fellow of India Council of Medical Research, African Union, STRC. So on the first instance, what is bioinformatics? Uh, the a branch of science that is rooted uh, with the use of computer and information science and technologies. And we can say that bioinformatics is an application of information technology to the processing and analysis, analyzing of data generated in biological research and experiments. So the aim of bioinformatics or the objective is to enrich biological uh, data to apply to computer using a lot of arrays. Then we can also say that it is the anal was about analysis, data storage, and exchange of each information. And that is something we all know about. We have DNA barcode in design of fatal disease. We have uh, outbreaks, and uh, we have so many things like that to talk about in the bioinformatics. And it has some areas at which it overlaps. For instance, it involves mathematics and statistics. It involves biology, medicine, database, text mining, web application, algorithms. And we can allow us to have a complete understanding of a system like biomolecules, environment, clinicians, organism, RNA, DNA, and the likes. What is the aim of bioinformatics? Is to organize data in a way that allows researchers to access this information and to solve new entry that produce. It allows us to develop tools, resources that aid in the analysis and management of data sets, to use the data to analyze and interpret results. Likewise, uh, this has also helped EDA to, in understanding the protein structures and drug. So bioinformatics is widely used in the area of medicine, microbial genome, and agriculture. We're going to be listing out some areas, the application of bioinformatics in the field of biomedical sciences. Medicine, it has really helped in drug discovery. So infectious disease are now the world largest killer of children and young adults. They account for more than 13 million deaths in a year. One in two deaths in developing countries are stated by WHO. So bioinformatics has allowed us to develop cheap and efficient drugs for a disease, and which is a major problem. And pharmaceutical industry now have switched from trial and error process of drug discovery to a rational structure-based drug design. So a successful and reliable drug design process could waste us time and other things, but bioinformatics have do. During the COVID, these are some of the publications that we did from our hands. 
you know that we are exploring some activities of some uh potential uh plant as can be used against sars cov2 which uh actually help to kill or reduce the severity of the disease uh these are two publications from our work and this is another one this is gazinia cola which you know is cola not look at some potential things that can be done now there is an area that is coming up gradually it's fully developed developing countries and that is what we call personalized medicine i think somebody microphone is on okay i've, I've gotten that yeah so we call it personalized medicine that means we are using a genetical profile of an individual to decide to understand the time, the type of prevention, diagnosis, and treatment to be given. And information about patient genetic profile can help the doctor to provide proper medication using proper dose and regimen. I will cite an example. Two individuals could have malaria. It happened in our place here. And you discover that a drug works for one person than the other. So there'll be two different drugs given to two different persons for the same kind of disease. But we don't want to do try and error anymore. We want to understand that which drug is meant for this person according to his own genetic makeup. And it has been applied for treatment in terms of cancer medicine, diabetes, and HIV. And personalized medicine can be used in healthcare for predictive to personalize and participatory. Yeah, I'm trying to get someone muted. Yeah, perfect. Now, like I said, it's used for predictive, personalized, and preventive and participatory. Now, the aim of personalized medicine is to discover individual solution based on the sociability profile of each individual. It is expected that this area will be enable new approaches to diagnostic to development and personalized. Now, this is one of our preferred person that is one of our mentor that works in London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, that they work on Uganda genome population. And they have a findings. They look at 6,400 people from rural community and they added another 40,000 to examine the genetic determinant trait within the population. And it was discovered that there is a variant for thalassemia, which is present in 22% of African, which is associated with glycolated hemoglobin, an indicator commonly used in diagnosis of diabetes. That is glycolated hemoglobin prevent us from having a disease and that's the marker they are using to diagnose diabetes. So they are, they say there's probability that diabetes will be misdiagnosed in some Africa if this tool is used as a diagnostic tool. It means we need more novel diagnostic tool for diagnosing diabetes in Africa based on their finding. Then we have what we call predictive medicine. Predictive medicines allow physicians to process the, their paternity health. It means that when a child is being born, the DNA is being sequenced, and from there we can predict at what age, what is the disease that this child is likely to have, and what are the techniques that we can use to prevent such a disease. And we have a case study of uh, a five-week-old um, <coughs> child, meaning that that was admitted two hours, and a lot of things was done, and a blood sample was collected. Uh, after 13 hours, initial sequencing was done. And from there, we're able to know which gene uh, needed to be treated. And from there, the, the child was treated and uh, he was uh, very, very okay after such a treatment. There's another thing that we try to talk about is under clinical metagenomics. For those who has that idea, there are some disease that 
the normal way of diagnosing cannot pick them. But through this clinical metagenomics, it is easier for us to diagnose. And this is just one of the work that was done. Now, we have genomics, and that's just estimating the number of genes we have uh, in a particular uh, gene of uh, a, a, a organism in the area of structural genomics, functional genomics, and, um, and uh, nutritional genomics. I told some people that nutritional genomics is coming, some people are sick, and there are particular food to eat, but you don't prescribe, you don't prescribe the food to eat to them only, but you do that based on their genetic uh, composition. And this has been really, really helpful to a lot of uh, patients. We have something called phylogeny, that's molecular phylogeny. Uh, it allows us to know how related a microbe is with others. And that's what has helped in terms of COVID. You see, they call one Delta variant, they say variant of concern, variant of interest. This has really helped us to use. And this is one of our work that we have done in the final information analysis of SARS CoV 2 in Nigeria to allow us. And another thing is that this process, this ICT has allowed us to develop vaccine. And there is a method called reverse vaccinology, and which we have used is a tool which has been learned and has enabled us to develop vaccine. And that's why from our helix, you can see here, this is a vaccine that we developed that was captured by WHO using bioinformatics and some other work. I don't know. These are some of the papers that we produce from it. We have a lot of lists of application of uh, bioinformatics that is growing daily. We have metagenomics, transomics, metabolomics, and cellulomics. And now, the major thing I'll be talking about after this background is to let you know that there are careers in bioinformatics. Uh, outside there, if you work as a bioinformatics computer specialist, you are going to be paid $23.92 per hour. And if you are a bioinformatics specialist, you're going to be paid uh, 23.92 power. I will have a bioinformatics programmer. We have a national average salary of 78.165 per year. Now we have a bioinformatics analyst, and this is what he gets per year. We have a bioinformatics uh, scientist. This is what he gets per year. We have a bioinformatics consultant. This is what he gets per year. And now, not to talk about this, I have a student that have learned one or two bioinformatics skills from course, and that has enabled them to have a better leverage than others. And they are now in China, UK, and US, based on this training, because they have something they've added to their work, and that gives them a leverage for getting admission in other schools outside the country. Because now in the era of SARS-CoV-2 and everything, there is nothing here again that genomics will not be involved. And for you to be skilled in genomics, to know how to analyze the sets, it makes it easier for you to travel out. Majority of masters abroad now, there is no call for application that you see, that you not see ability to analyze the data set of genomics. Once you know how to analyze this data set, you can do that. And for some that want to work remotely, there are some consultation, consultation work that if you are skilled in it, you can get the work and still make your cool dollars from home before even getting a job there. And we have a lot of pharmaceutical industries like Visa, Johnson Johnson. I've seen a lot of their adverts for companies outside the country there that they needed a bioinformatician to work. Even in springing up in Africa, I knew there was a time that Lagos government also made an advert for people that are into bioinformatics to come inside. Uh, to come in and apply. I knew the time where uh, Naima, that's Nigeria Institute of Medical Research, also plays an hardback. So having this skill give you a leverage above others that have not had the skill. So that's the essence of doing bioinformatics, know how to use it. And at this, it gives you a leverage to travel out. It's giving you a service source of income for you. I have two students now that went through me that are trained in bioinformatics and one won Commonwealth scholarship is currently in Pretoria University in South Africa now. That gave her a leverage for that. Do she went for a PhD. I have another one now 
that is currently in US, they gave her a teaching assistant. And it's because of this bioinformatics, other skills that they had that make the journey so faster for them. So uh, for my life, I have received funding from all these bodies you are seeing. You have Africa Partnership for Coney Disease. We have International Regent Resource. We have a Medical Research Council from British Europe. We have Cambridge. We have IT. We have Bill and Mini Gates Foundation. We have Mercator Foundation. We have AIMS. We have African Union. We have A3 Bionet. These are International Union of Technological Societies. These are bodies that have sponsored a lot of training for me. I've benefited from them based on this uh, bio informatics. These are a group of people here that I've trained. And I can tell you this lady is in China presently. This one is in UK. This one is planning to move to Ghana. And these are students that have attended our training and they have, have a life uh, change for what they have done. And I'm happy that we all are here. So I'll, I've made the presentation very short so that I can take questions and answer your question. Through some there, you know much about bioinformatics. Thanks for listening. Now, I really want to take questions from participants so that from there, we can know more. Thank you, sir, for the- Yeah, somebody is asking if I can share some of my published articles after this presentation. I will send it to the organizers and share, or I send the link of my Google Scholar to you or you can see all those publications there for you to go through and download. I think Sumolu Olawali asked that question. Okay, so um, I would like to ask a question, sir. Yes. So um, how does the training work and that, do I have to get a job immediately or it is just a leverage for me to get an admission into a school? Now, it is in two folds. Number one is a leverage for you to get admission into school. But if you are highly skilled, there are a lot of online sites where you can bid for job. And if you get the job, they pay you in dollar. So it depends on the way you want to go. I have some students that have partook in our training and now they are getting some analysis, uh, data analysis job for them. So depending the time they will get out of the country. So it's in two ways. The two ways are working perfectly okay. Thank you for that. Then another question, it seems like a data, is it data analysis course, but they will be analyzing medical history, or can you share a bit about the job experience? And now, the kind of data that they'll be analyzing is biomedical data in terms of genomics, in terms of genes. Now, we, we can talk about, uh, you know, when SARS CoV 2 came in, we're able to know that there is mutation, there is mutation, there is mutation. So that is a data set of SARS-CoV-2 they are analyzing. They can analyze the data set of human to know which disease they are prone to. That's why I call predictive medicine. And that one is just coming up to the African gradually. And the first set of people that grab the skill will be the frontline people to eat the cake at the end of the day. Now, somebody has a question that I want to answer. He said, aside drug discovery and design, what are other branches of bioinformatics? Uh, I can tell you that I've talked about predictive medicine. I talk about predictive medicine. It depends on the interest. There is no way that bioinformatics does not work. Even those who are Greek, there isn't bioinformatics. I've seen in China where they use bioinformatics, we call it metagenomics on the soil to determine the plants that will be planted on the soil without application of fertilizer. And for those who are pharmacists, they can go 
into drug discovery, drug design, going to vaccine discovery, vaccine design, and they can go into predictive medicine. They can go into nutrigenomics to know which nutrition fit a particular genome of a person. And aside that, they can use that as research, which, or they go into industry. And that is what they are using to do now, like 54 gene in Nigeria is trying to take all this in order to design a drug that will be specific for our African population. You know, we have some enzymes in the body that metabolizes some drug at age. Studies have shown that at a certain age in African population, they lack some enzymes. So there is need to develop and make some new drug that is African based that will work according to our own genetic purpose. And pharmaceutical industries can equally even pick somebody that has a good skill to work for them. Any question again? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Although I joined quite a bit late, but I'd okay. like to ask that, can we get a recording of your presentation after the class? Maybe you could, uh, the link will be sent to our various email addresses. I think the organizer is recording it. So they will be in charge of that. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Then there's a question here, sir, that you missed. The person said already I have an MSc in pharmaceutical sciences. So is money I want to know? <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, you can you cannot have the money until you have the skills. It's when you have the skill, the money will come. You can yeah. even work remotely for some uh, group of people. By the time you come for the training, when I will package them already. Okay, so you will need drinks as well. By the time you come for the training, some sites will be introduced to you. So from there, you can pick up. But that one, it depends on you. If you deliver the job correctly, you'll be paid. And after we be paid in dollars, not even in error. So, any more question? Do we have more questions? Yes, so I have a question. So, so oh. for in our data analysis course, for instance, we yeah. have some medical personnel in the class that just take the normal data visualization course. Is it the okay. same thing or it has to be a special, they need to be able to analyze a particular data set it's not the same thing there are tools that they've introduced to for such analysis oh, so this okay. one is much of medical decision on a patient or on a pathogen oh, no. but having that idea we serve as a background for them we help them a lot on that okay now i totally understand it so we have like just eight minutes to go. Any more questions from the participants? I'm not sure, I'm not sure we have any questions any more question at the moment. So maybe when they cut the replay, they'll be able to make their decision. 
But okay. at our own end, we'll start talking about the course. And then um, anyone who wants to register with Dr. Ladipo would have to come through us. We are looking at January to launch the course so that you can begin a new career in the new year, 2022. So yeah. I hope that will work. And I can tell them that I have a lot of training courses. We have for basing design, we have for bioinformatics, and those who want to go into molecular biology to work in the lab with their skills, they can get it done. Like I was sharing with her the other time, that a few people I know working in some lab for this COVID, they have been paid minimum of two fifty thousand euro per month. And some have used that to navigate to get job with international organization like UNESCO, FIH, all this stuff. And that's given it the privilege to even travel out to get a better thing. So, and I know a lot of pharmaceutical industry out there, they are looking for a job like that. And it's because we are into capacity building in the country. That is why we are in the country. If not that we are interested in capacity building, we'll have packed our loot and go either but some of our students that we have trained they've left because we just want to build more capacity in this area okay sir so Simona said um can we know about the training course what is the curriculum like and what are we expected to learn well, we have diploma program, we have certificate program. Certificate program, you just have an idea about it, know what it entails, know what you can do, do some few things. That is two months. But diploma course is four to five months. You'll be taught, you'll be given a mini project that you're interested in. You have a supervisor that will guide you through. With that, it means you have a sound knowledge. But for somebody that wants to travel out to have an idea to leverage for his MSc or PhD or even degree, that will give them a better leverage. But you cannot use that to work with a company. But if you have a diploma, it means you have laid hand on those two perfectly. You have worked, you have interpreted, you have anything. Then that one give you good leverage of traveling out and give you leverage of getting a job either over there or a remote job. Those are the two differences between the certificate and diploma program. Yeah, I wish we had more time. We, Dr. Oladipo also talks about designing COVID, the um, COVID drugs, COVID vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if we can talk a little about, speak a little about that because some people don't know that it's possible. Yeah, it was possible because of bioinformatics there's and other things we call immunoinformatics. Because in our hand, we work on something that is called translational research. And that's what we're doing. We tell people how to design vaccine. And a funny thing about it is that there are some companies that are looking for people that can design. I have some of my guys that also from people from Thailand, Finland, all those like that. I have a data analyst that we analyze data set for PhD students, master's students, even for companies that they paid for that kind of work. So even for vaccine now, we're able to design without even seeing the virus. There are methods to doing that. And I show you how, where, how, where our name was on WHO list. So to let you know that it is real, we can't fumble. Uh, I, can, I can show you the website. You can go there anytime you find it there. So we have able to translate that and we are moving on. Even now, there's another thing we've added now. We have been training people now on how to develop diagnostic kits, though we've not started the course. So people can set up their own company, our partner, our investor, and are developing diagnosis because majority of diagnostic kits in Nigeria are being imported. So if you do it in Nigeria and have it more cheaper, there's tendency for you to have your sales better than it. And that one is even more uh, easier than vaccine because that vaccine has a long ethical issue to follow, but diagnostic kit, there's nothing. And even if you go into vaccine for animals or those in agriculture, you don't have wala. Easily you get it approved and you start getting your cash as long as you see a pharmaceutical industry that can partner with you and get it up from you and sign it with you. So that's what we are trying to do. It is possible in this country. Ah, Jesus. 
So I think uh, Tolu and Nimi have probably want to talk. Yeah, we have just three minutes to go. And I can equally tell you that schools that are offering these or uh, institute that are offering this, they are not much in Nigeria. We only have some India guys that are trying to collaborate with some people in Nigeria. To, uh, but this thing is plating in India as a lot of pharmaceutical industry are using it. So uh, I, I would love each one of us to actually use this opportunity to grab this and work on this. It's, it's, it's a big opportunity for us to have this. And I can tell you that the way we teach, the way we impart knowledge here is different from what others are doing. And that will make you to be very, very uh, a blessed person at the end of the day. So I, I would like to thank everyone for listening to what we have said. Uh, thank the organizers for giving it a privilege to come to speak to these uh, great audience. And I thank for everyone for the questions that have been asked. I believe by the time we're watching the video back again, we will have gained or learned more about it. And uh, for sure, it's worth investing on. It's worth trying. <laughs>